Okay, so first of all, well, thank you. I mean, the people keep flooding in and we start, you know, having a, an overflow here, but that's a good sign. Uh, it means a lot of interest. I'm going to talk about enterprise data center, uh, which is mainly, you know, for um, uh, enterprises. There will be another uh, session about data center, but a much larger scale this afternoon at one. And uh, I'm going to have, it's going to be in two parts, and I'll show you um, what we're going to talk about. So, is this working? Yes. I'm going to talk about different market trends happening in the data center today and how actually uh, the change in behaviors impacts the network there, uh, as well as, you know, what a typical implementation for a data center and a SDN enabled data center is going to look like. I'll touch briefly upon the, the most frequently used cases and associated benefit. But I saw that instead of me, and I work for a big switch network, so hopefully you know, we're selling this technology, we're selling SDN controller and application, and instead of us and, and myself talking about the use cases and the benefits, you will want to hear it from someone who's actually um, deploying it, using it, uh, much more than a vendor, and so Jim Harding is gonna join me uh, for the second part of this presentation to share with you uh, his use cases. So first of all, let's start by why do we call um, data centers? So obviously, you know, it's a chair pool of resources across compute storage and the network, and here the network could be a virtual switch as well as a physical um, networking devices. What we're gonna call in the rest of this presentation private cloud uh, are all those pool of resources uh, within the firewall. I won't touch um, about you know, who is owning what and who is doing the maintenance of what. I'm just looking at the pure implementation and elements being on one side or the other of the firewall. Obviously, you're gonna have a lot of combination depending on who is doing the maintenance, who is owning the equipment, and, um, and so forth. So what has changed uh, in the data center space and why, you know, how we're looking at SDN to help it out? So obviously a lot more devices, if you look, and I'm sure several of you are gonna recognize themselves here, you know, you probably have more than one devices, uh, and now it's between four to six for every user out there. And if you look at the number of people connected, this has generated a tremendous amount of traffic in what we call you know, um, north-south traffic, so user accessing uh, information through multiple devices. But what has really challenged data center uh, is uh, what we call the um, east-west traffic. So let's have a look at an Alta Vista screenshot, and I think it was Oh boy, probably 15, <laughs> 15 years ago, 20 years ago, that's how it looked like. And, uh, and you can see it's very simple. Now, you look at any page you go on the web, and I just pulled out my own LinkedIn page. And suddenly you can see the amount of information before the information even reaches you on your device. That has to happen. Applications have to connect with each other. LinkedIn has to talk with your contact in Yahoo, your contact in Facebook, you can see the latest tweet of all uh, the people, they know your location, they're gonna show you the job opportunities available in your area, they know your profile, maybe if you are uh, in networking, they will show you uh, all this type of information. And what happened is in the data center, a lot of resources across compute storage uh, have to cross through the network, exchange information even before this information reach out to you on the device. And so there have been a tremendous amount of east-west traffic and that's why the data center uh, start becoming you know, challenged in terms of how to manage this traffic in the most efficient way. And clearly this is when software-defined networking and open flow can really play a role in simplifying how you're gonna face this demand. So a few numbers to give you some perspective on actually how big the impact is going, um, is going on right here. So first of all, uh, I would say a few years back, you know, most of the traffic was 80% in the campus, 20 in the data center. Because now applications are more complex. 
it's expecting that um, two years from now, 80% of the traffic will really be east-west, which means that the whole networking around the data center has to shift very fast, has very little time to make sure we can support the demand. Uh, the second thing is also fluctuations. It's a much volatile um, type of usage. You won't suddenly to access the same application all at once. An example, I'm sure plenty of you are tweeting right now, uh, and that's just because of this event, and during lunchtime, you know, the traffic will go down. Uh, when at a data center, you know, it's starting around 8 a.m., everybody connects, and so all these variations are gonna keep increasing, and you can see these stats, is it's gonna be 90 times higher than what we're experimenting today. What does it mean? Do we have to over-provision 19 times more? Is it cost efficient? Not really. How are we gonna manage all those resources to be able, when it's needed, to have this demand? A lot of companies and enterprises right now are looking at private and public cloud as a way to offload and better manage these changes and fluctuation in traffic. Everybody is conscious about it when you look at how much, oh, I'm sorry, uh, spending is being done right now. You can see that a lot of spending and the fastest increase is on the Ethernet switching piece. Um, you know, everybody's planning their budget, uh, you probably are. You can see this as an opportunity or as an impact on your budget, but you really cannot ignore it. Uh, this is a number one um, uh, infrastructure sales, you know, uh, over the last couple of years. It was growing very fast. It keeps growing in. And you see it's not just SNS switching. The storage infrastructure also and all the others are impacted. And you can see the percentage and the growth at which uh, the cells are growing to adapt. Finally, it's not a small market. Just in 2010, just for data center in terms of infrastructure. And of course, you know, we can debate the numbers because each research uh, firm has different numbers. But just for 2010, if I look at Gartner and the Synergy Research Group and make some uh, estimate and average, we are 13 uh, billion for the spending on, on one year. So that was a trend in terms of traffic and in terms of spending across the data center. Now I would like to talk more about the trends in terms of CIOs top of mind and trends in terms of organization as well. As we mentioned, the venue of increased demand, more cloud application have an impact on what become each enterprise priority when it comes to data center as well as how the compute team, the storage team, and the networking team work together. So the top initiatives that we saw in different uh, customers, but also that were validated by some research, was first of all, melting of the silos. And I think um, Harry mentioned this in this presentation as well. It's really, how can we coordinate better when you have one application being deployed, you want to make sure that the storage associated with it and the network associated with it is also uh, ready at the same time that you want to deliver the application. And right now, this is not necessarily how organizations are structured. You also want to have workload mobility, as I mentioned. With all the fluctuation, you want to be able to move some workload from one place to another to better utilize your resources available. Network topology independence, I'll show you one of the use cases, but clearly the freedom of melting the silos and moving workloads from one to another location or you know, switching or server is very much dependent on your network topology today. <laughs> How can we make this and all the design of the network that's pretty complex and at the moment is quite static? How can we automate this, make it dynamic and pretty much make all the cloud solution, which are a mix of, of the three categories, independent of this topology. Finally, you know, ideally, not only do we want to be coordinated across all of them, we also want to make sure that instead of having to manually assign resources, they all look like a big pool that you can put from and in a software manner dynamically assigned to different workload, different tenant, different application. 
Um, and in the end, once all of this is done, and that's a very long term, as you can see, you know, the timeline is progressing here, and that's a longer term, but really, you know, how can we even converge infrastructure, storage infrastructure, and a new network infrastructure? So to make all of this happen, to make sure that we have a dynamic cloud solution, there are several criteria that we may want to consider. How easy it is to automate this? Or do we have every time to go and do it manually? Is it easy to troubleshoot every time there is a problem? Can we roll back to the last configuration? What level of control do we have? Do we have control at the server level, at the virtual machine level, at the switch level? Uh, and obviously, if you want to start mixing up vendors in your same network, then you need to have different tools for each one of them, which is slowing down the whole process. Finally, can you see the resources available to you in its entirety? Can you manage it as an entire pool, or do you have to reproduce the same work, depending on each network segment you are looking at? If you look at all those criteria, you can see that the compute space is very well advanced. Uh, and actually, you know, it's quite le the leader in this space. And what happened? Well, compute virtualization happened. And that's really what, you know, decouple the hardware and the physical layer from the software and the application. And that allows you to have all of this together. The storage is very well on its way as well. But when it comes to the network, the automation is still um, not fully there. You still have to log in on each switch to configure them with CLIs. The troubleshooting, there is no option to roll back to the past configuration in your network. You run a script, you test it, and then if it's not working, you have to run another script to reconfigure it. But it's not automated. It's not one magic button you push, and everything goes back to where it was. Granularity control, same thing. It's very hard to have a control at the flow level, which is really what OpenFlow, by definition, is offering. Vendor independency, each vendor has their own uh, management system. And uh, resource visibility also is not, uh, is not easy. You really have to work out to make sure you understand what's going on in your network. So how does it translate when we look at the network of a data center? And you know, for the ones who are already in this space, this may be the obvious. But I just want to make sure we start with a level of uh, understanding of where SDN can apply and how you deploy it. But pretty much in data center, you have a certain number of servers per rack. Some of the servers are virtualized, and you have virtual switch on them, and different hosts connecting to each other via those, diff those virtual switches. You can have a mix of bare metal or, or servers that are not virtualized as well. All of them connected via um, access switches, connecting, of course, together. And that's a top of rack implementation. You can have a different one. And just to simplify you know, this, um, um, this presentation, I've just picked one. Uh, aggregation switches, and finally, core switches. And, and then you go through layer three. And you may have these multiple time and multiple data centers. So first of all, how do we implement software-defined network and open flow into this? Um, you need to open flow enable all the switches into your data centers. And by what I mean all the switches is really regardless of the nature. It could be a virtual switch. It could be um, uh, an access switch, an aggregation switch. And all of them actually will connect via an IP connection to your SDN controller. And the controller will be able to extract the control information and push changes on the forwarding plan of all of them. And that's really unique. By this, I mean the, the bare metal server will be able to um, connect to a physical switch that's open flow enable. And the virtual switches uh, on the virtualized server will also be able to be part of this. And it's an entire visibility across all of them that you can get and optimize resources across all of them. So now I'm going to reuse you know, the, the diagram that Dan uh, showed you. But we're going to look at this. So this was a physical implementation. And now we're going to shift to a logical uh, architecture, because this is really where software-defined networking is bringing value. Now you can abstract all the physical implementation and manipulate entities in a logical way via a software program. And that's really what's new. So all the data layer and the pool of network resources you're going to manage 
or a mix of physical and virtual switches. They all communicate by open flow to an SDN controller um, that's going to bring virtualization of this network and will be able to manipulate the forwarding plan. And on top of this, you will have um, application. It could be network services applications, such as network management, load balancing, firewall, any type, but also orchestration. Uh, and actually, you're going to see some demonstration uh, in the exhibitor uh, space with orchestration working on top of SDN controllers, uh, with security application working on top of SDN controllers. Uh, you ask, you know, uh, how does it work? Is it part of the controller? Is it separate? And, um, and Dan said, you know, it's really open right now. Um, I will tell you just based on my personal uh, experience when we talk to customers, they already have network services in their network. They already have a firewall appliance. They already have a load balancer. And so what the controller could do to seamlessly integrate is to redirect the traffic and configure the forwarding plan to make sure the traffic still goes to those appliances. Uh, we launched, uh, Big Switch Network launched uh, Floodlight, which was uh, an open source controller in January. And we saw a lot of companies in network services though, building applications that are SDN aware on top of the controller in the same server, which is another way of implementing it. And you'll see some demos over there, um, I believe from VRMOR running, um, um, I think, deep packet inspection with SDN capabilities and the ability to change the forwarding plan dynamically. So really everything is open. It really depends on what you want in your network. Do you want to reuse your equipment? Do you want to have everything on the same server with a controller? But it's a lot of flexibility because now you ignore the physical implementation and you just, you know, can get your traffic redirected the way you want based on your business needs, not really a network constraint. So um, let's go through a, um, a couple of use cases, a very high level. And uh, again, I won't spend too much time on them because um, Jim will, will really give you a, a much better perspective as being the first users uh, and first end on users of this technology. Uh, but there are a lot of ways for you to slice and dice your network right now. Depending on your business need, you want to do this per tenant. You may want to do this per workload or VLANs. You want to do this maybe just because of the topology you've implemented your network. And, and, and the way you implement this is going to create what I call, and it's not by no means uh, uh, an industry name, but I call a network segment. And it's a container. And within this network, this is where your resources are going to be available. And so you're going to have some compute resources um, that are going to be utilized to a certain point. And here, in my example, you know, in the first network segment, you have compute resources and server being used to 95% of the resources. And in the last one, you got 30. Now, obviously, if you are in the server administration team, what you want is to rebalance. Maybe you have a rule that say, you know, I always need 30% of the resources of my compute, um, of my servers being available because of the fluctuation that we just talked about early on. How can I move some of my compute resources to use the ones that are free in the, in the other network segment? Well, right now, I place a ticket with a network administrator team and most of the time, I have to wait quite a long time before this can be done. Maybe by then, you know, the compute resources are not used to this level. It's really, you know, what we heard from a couple, um, and I think this is a quote uh, from Amazon, the network gets in my way. Now, what is a traditional solution? That's what I just explained. The server administrator plays a ticket, uh, the network manager then redesigns the network. He has to do this manually to make sure that he can allocate enough incremental servers to um, decrease the utilization rate uh, to something that will accommodate for uh, fluctuations. And this is static. It takes days. In well-organized companies, sometimes it can take up to a week because you have to wait for the next maintenance cycle. So imagine that you have a cloud solution to deliver, business-driven. I mean, you're going to lose you're going to lose days of you know, incremental business and creating value for your company. And most of the time, what you're going to end up doing is you're going to over-provision your network. And by this, I mean you're going to have to um, spend 
expensive equipment up front, and then it's going to be very much time consuming every time to go back if there is any change. In an SDN solution, because we abstract all the physical implementation, we're just going to show on an interface, you know, the network has a big pool of resources that you can actually slice and dice, but in a software manner and dynamically and based on business rule, not necessarily networking rule, because the controller will do all the translation in terms of what it means for the configuration of each individual switches automatically. So then what happens is this looks like one single network and yes, you have group within it, and the compute resources can move freely across the segment uh, of the network. You don't need to have you know, this limitation that has to change manually. You can really do this in a software manner, increase resources and decrease this, um, just running software, and adapt to the compute resources, for instance. What does it require? Well, you reuse your existing equipment. Obviously, it has to be open flow enabled. <coughs> Uh, a lot of vendors now are offering open flow enable switches. Uh, it's a firmware upgrade. Uh, we actually, there is an open source firmware for switches called Indigo, if you want to, uh, to check it out and you can download it and play with it as well. And then all the resource optimization is going to be dynamic. Now you, you're more scalable, your efficiency is improved, and of course automation is much easier because uh, it's based on the software uh, instead of uh, manual CLIs. So this is kind of a, uh, the first use cases at a high level. It's, um, uh, and the second one, of course, is when I talk about comprehensive view of what's going on in your network. Now you can see not only physical switches, but also virtual switches. When you want to troubleshoot, you can see everything at once because the control plane that the controller will show you has all this information. Um, you will reduce your downtime because you, you'll be able to um, find faster where the problem is. And also, you know, you'll be able to look at historical data and better plan your traffic engineering and enforce policies when, you know, you want to make sure some resources are isolated from each other. Uh, you don't have to check it manually now. You can run, actually, um, uh, software policies and enforce them throughout the network uh, in one click. So that's kind of the promise and the, the way that you, we should think about SDN and OpenFlow when it comes to the data center. So of course, you know, this is very, um, well, this is a slide. And as I say, it's, nothing is better to have someone who actually is delivering solutions like this and using the technology to talk about it. 